inverse now to one. But 6.3a, square root, find the inverse unit six is what we're in still. Um, and this should be on page 126. So if your notebook's not organized, just go ahead and make sure you write page 126 so you can reference back to it. All right, so what are we focusing on here? We're looking for the inverse operations, which means that how do you undo something, okay? Addition and subtraction are inverse operations. Multiplication and division are inverse operations, right? The inverse of a cube number, of cubing a number is to take its cube root. The inverse of a square is to take the square root, right? If two functions are inverse, they consist of inverse operations performed in the opposite order. Okay, so um, what is the inverse of, of the relationship described here? F of X equals X plus one. If you watched your do now video, he gave you some steps to follow when you're finding the inverse, right? So step one is we're gonna switch X and Y. So X and Y are gonna switch places. Remember F of X is just a fancy way of saying y. So we end up with x equals y plus one. It's going to show at some point. Now. Show it. Go. I've written x equals y plus one, and I don't know why it's not showing me. There we go. All right. So we know that x equals y plus one. That's step one. Step two is a solve for y. So you're gonna use inverse operations to solve for y. So you're gonna do whatever you need to do to get y by itself. So looking here, what would I need to do to get y by itself? Uh, subtract one, right? So I subtract one from both sides. So I have x minus one, equals y plus one minus one. This is gonna cancel out and I'm left with y being by itself. And the last and final step is to rewrite it using inverse. So we rewrite using inverse notation. So we'd write f to the negative one or y to the negative one, just to show that that's the inverse. So our answer here would be to start off f of x. So f inverse of x equals x minus one. Does that seem terrible? So we switch x and y, we solve for y, we rewrite. Okay. Let's deal with the word problem. So it says here, the function D equals four and nine tenths T squared represents the distance D in meters that an object falls in T seconds due to Earth's gravity. Find the inverse of this function. How long in seconds does it take for the cliff diver show to reach the water below? So there's two parts. So part one is you're gonna find the inverse of the function. And then part two, we're gonna use the inverse to answer the question. So right now the function is defined by the distance, right? And then by time. And it's gonna tell us the distance. We wanna define it by time to find the, I'm gonna define it by distance so that we can know what the time is, okay? So we have D equals four and nine, that's a nine T squared. Step one tells us to switch our independent and dependent variable. So when we switch them, we end up with T equals four and nine tenths D squared. So we switched our independent and dependent variables. How do you feel about the switch? Okay. Step two says to solve for that variable. So now we're solving for D. 
So what do I need to do to get D by itself? It's multiplication, right? What's the opposite of multiplication? Divide. So I'm gonna divide by four and nine tenths. And what I do to one side, I have to do to the other. So we're left with T over four and nine tenths equals D squared. Is D by itself yet? It is? Oh, no. All right, what's the last thing I need to get D by itself? Take the square root, does the opposite of squaring is to take the square root. So we're gonna take the square root, uh, the numerator and the denominator. Or just leave it all as a square root in all honesty. And now this cancels out. So now we know what D is. So we're gonna rewrite. Because these are defined variables already as D and T, we don't have to worry about writing um, inverse. So we now just know that D equals the square root of T divided by four and nine tenths. Not D, I wrote that wrong. I'm sorry. We now solved. They switched roles, T and D. I was like, I wrote that back. So now our roles are back. T is our dependent, D is our independent. So this is the function we're working with. And now I want to answer the question, how long in seconds does it take for the cliff diver to, diver shown to reach the water below? Well, how far does the cliff diver have to go? 24 meters, right? So that means all I have to do is plug in 24 to find its time. So we have T equals the square root of 24 divided by four and nine tenths. I'm gonna pull out my handy dandy calculator. All right, so I'm gonna do my division, then my square root. So I have 24 divided by four and nine tenths. And then I'm gonna take the square root of that. And it gives me two and 20, roughly two and 21 hundredths. Is it okay if I cut off right here? Okay, so let's repeat what I did. All I did was do the math, 24 divided by four and nine tenths. Then I took the square root and I got two and 21 hundredths. So how long will it take for him to fall? Two and 21 hundred seconds. Okay, so in all honesty, did you have to find the inverse to answer this question? No. Could you have plugged in 24 from the beginning and just did the inverse? Yes, you could have. You could have just plugged in 24, divided, took the square root, call it a day. But I wanted to practice making sure we could find the inverse because what if it's not just 24? What if it's okay, what about 56? What about 36? What about 
all these other distances. If I have a formula where I could just plug in the distance and not have to redo that process every single time, that's what makes it easier, okay? This one, it's a one problem. So I could have just plugged in and solved, uh, but just wanted to make sure we're okay and that we're comfortable understanding that the inverse of a square is the square root. All right, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna do a couple practices together. We're gonna start off, I'm gonna give you time to do it and then we're gonna go through it together to see how well you did it. Um, the first one we have here is y equals, it's kind of hard, y equals three halves x minus two. And I want you to find the inverse of it and then we're gonna go over it. So I'm gonna give you a couple minutes to start here. And then we'll go over it. Okay, so the first thing you should have done was switch your x and your y. So now you have x equals three half y minus two. Step one. Step two is to get y by itself. So I'm going to add two to both sides. That's going to give me x plus two. That's not a two. Equals three halves y. Y is still not by itself. So how do you cancel out a fraction? I'm glad you asked. You cancel out a fraction by multiplying by its reciprocal. So instead of three halves, it becomes two thirds. And that's what, how you cancel out a fraction. And what you do to one side, you do to the other. So now y is by itself. So step three is to rewrite it. So we have the inverse equals, and you can distribute it or leave it as is. Um, I really don't care. So you have two thirds, x plus two, or you can write it as two thirds x plus four thirds. Remember when you distribute a fraction times a whole number, it's the numerator times the whole, which makes it four over three. All right, questions about number one? How'd y'all do on number one? Yeah, okay. Let's try number two. So number two, we'll start together. Remember you're switching your X and your Y. That's step one to switch. So when you switch, you have X equals three Y squared plus two. Step two is to get y by itself. So what do we need to do to get y by itself? Subtract, Subtract the two, exactly. And we have x minus two equals three y squared. And you wanna keep trying to get y by itself? Is y by itself yet? No. So what's the next thing I need to do? It's a multiplication. Divide three. So I'm gonna divide everything by So now we have this and y still not by itself. Mm, I'm gonna have to take the square root. So now y is by itself. So my inverse equals, and when you take the square root of something, it's gonna create a plus or minus x minus two over three. Okay, let's try number three. So number three, we have y equals the square root of x plus four. So we have the square root of x plus four. First step to do is to switch the x and the y, right? Mm -hmm. So we switch them and we get x equals the square root of y plus four. Next, we're gonna get y by itself. What is the first thing I need to do to get y by itself? Subtract the four, good job. So we have x minus four equals the square root of y. Mm -hmm. 
What is the inverse of square root? Oh, square. Square. Okay. When you square, be careful. You have to include parentheses because the square applies to all of the terms. So y is now by itself. It's happy. So our inverse equals x minus 4 squared. All right, questions. Okay, so I would like for you to try the last three and then we'll check them, okay? All right, let's talk about what we got. So, on number four, you notice that you had division. And what's the opposite of dividing? Multiplication. Multiplication. So before you do anything, you had to remove the division. So you should have multiplied both sides by two. And then you were left with two X equals Y minus one. And the inverse of subtracting one is to add one. So we add one of both sides. Y is now by itself. So that's our inverse. Y inverse equals 2X plus one. Questions about number four. Number five. You switch your independent and dependent, your X and your Y. The opposite of taking the square root is to square. So you should have squared both sides. After you squared both sides, you were left with X squared equals Y plus two. The opposite of adding two is to subtract two. Y is now by itself. So your inverse equals X squared minus all right, number six would probably be the toughest of the bunch. So you switch your X and your Y. You start off with the multiplication. So the opposite of multiplying is to divide. So you should have divided by two. So that would have given you X divided by two. After you divided by two, you had to get rid of the square. So the opposite of squaring something is to take the square root. When you take the square root of something, it's gonna create a positive and a negative. And we were left with y minus five. The opposite of subtracting five is to add five. So we added five and we're left with the inverse equals positive five plus or minus the square root of x divided by two. All right, and that concludes our notes. Please stay in your seats until the bell is going to ring in about 30 seconds.